Hey there viewers and welcome back to Grumpy Monkey Garage which a freaking igloo in the shop today. So I figured we'd go ahead and take this opportunity to take apart this old engine from a Cavalier. It's a 2.2 GM. Show you how uh, engines work. So that's what we're doing today. So when talking about engines, we're going to try and do it generically to try to explain it because I don't get a core engine that I don't owe back to the junkyard very often. They didn't want a core on 94 Cavalier though. They really didn't care. So we are going to be able to take this one apart. Um, this engine is not necessarily the most unique engine in the world, but at the same time, its implementation was definitely not the best implementation. It did better in the S10 trucks and in the mail trucks than it did in the Cavalier, which is why we had to replace this one. I don't actually know what's wrong with this engine. I just know that we had no compression on two and three. So, uh, I mean, none, zero. So I expect to either find a drop valve, a hole in a piston. Don't know the story. Never saw the car before it came in with a bad engine. So we're going to find out some things together as well. Now, the first thing to understand about engines is they have to do the five things we mentioned in how to get a car to run video, which we'll put in the description as well. Um, the engine has to do five things. It has to be able to burn gasoline and all that good stuff, but in this order. That's fuel, air, compression, timing, and spark. It's got to do those things. You follow facts to be able to figure that out. So anyway, um, so in order to do that, our fuel is going to come in through our fuel injection system, which is going to be on the intake side of the engine. Luckily, I've taken the intake off already to be able to show you how this works. So air comes in through the top of the intake. This is what would normally go over to your air filter. Comes in these little intake runners and goes, see these ports right here, these big open holes now? The fuel injectors go in there and they spray it directly into the engine through these little holes on the inside of the intake that you can see through right there. So that's how fuel gets in. So that's the fuel in facts right there. So next obviously is air, which comes through the exact same hole the fuel does. So the fuel and air get mixed on a port fuel injection engine. Carbureted engines did kind of a similar thing, but drawing the fuel in with vacuum through a carburetor. Modern direct injection engines don't do this. They're a little more complicated. They have high pressure. They direct it straight into the cylinder. They don't go through the intake. You get a little bit better gas mileage and you sacrifice a whole lot of reliability for it. So um, we will uh, get to that another time when we take apart one of those engines, which I'm sure we will. So we're going to show you where the stuff goes inside there and we'll get to our compression and timing. So the next part is hard to understand if you don't understand how an engine works. So we're going to actually come to the whiteboard of knowledge here and go ahead and uh, drop a few on you. So what you were just seeing is the valves inside the head moving up and down, but you kind of need to understand why they're doing that. So in order to compress, this is our crankshaft here with all of our very crappily done pistons. I'm not an artist, I'm a technician. We were turning the bolt on the crankshaft, which in turn turns the timing chain for this camshaft in blue here, which pushes on push rods that opens the valves, which you were looking at. Now, if you didn't follow any of that, that's fine. We're going to explain it. This over here is a side view, looking at it from the front over here on the camshaft. So this is the camshaft design. It's got a lobe on it. And as the lobe goes around, the high point will hit the push rod, push it up and open the valve. Now the valves you were just looking at were on the intake side. That's how the fuel and the air gets inside. So when that happens, the valve comes open from its seat and the fuel and air get dragged in. So blue here is our air and then we got our red is our gasoline coming in with the air. And it is coming like this. It's not rushing in in the liquid form. It's gonna be atomized or a mist if you would kind of think of it that way. So once it's inside the combustion chamber, all of this stuff right here was the timing. The timing chain, turning the camshaft to open the push rods, to open the valves. That is the T in facts. Now the compression, which is going to be our C before the T, is once it gets inside of here, this valve has to shut back tight so that the gas and the air are inside the combustion chamber so they can be blown up by our final spark. That means that they have to be squeezed really tight by the piston coming up, compressing them all together where it's really hot, it's really unpleasant for them. Then the spark plug in the top of the engine right here arcs across the gap and that electrical arc 
lights the gasoline on fire and explodes. When that happens, the piston will shoot down and start the rotation of the in engine process. Of course, the starter's already done that, but you see what I'm explaining. It's gonna spin the engine over, which is good. That means you're running. So when an engine does not run, you've lost one of these things, but that is how all of the timing and the compression works. Now let's get back over that engine and show you the actual internal parts of the engine now that you understand my very crappily drawn engine. Now going back to our drawing over there and applying it to this. So the camshaft is inside here, timing driven from the crankshaft. So this is the timing cover. The camshaft runs along the back of the engine and pushes on push rods that open the valves you just saw. Now what I'm gonna do is take out these spark plugs right here, get them out of the way. I'm gonna take this off so you guys can actually see the valves and I'll go ahead and move them again to show you how they're supposed to work. We could find broken stuff under here. Again, didn't take this engine apart before, so we could find broken stuff. If we don't, I'll show you how it works or at least how it's supposed to work. So I'm gonna do that now. This right here is your push rod. And what this does is pushes on the back of this rocker arm. So this is called the rocker arm. And the rocker arm sits down in here. And as the push rod comes up and down from the cam lobes, it pushes this to push down on the valve to open and close the valve. So that's how it works. So you can imagine it like one of those little, you know, if you've ever seen the cartoons with a little bird feeder that kind of bends over and gets in the water and then sits back up, whatever those things are called. Um, it's one of those kind of deals that kind of moves back and forth with the push rod pushing it, pushing it up and down. So that's how it works. So now we're gonna take it all apart and we'll pull the head off and show you the valves. The oil gallery that runs up the push rod right here is how lubrication gets to these valves. There's other ways oil gets up here too. You do have an oil pump, but um, that little hole allows oil to come through it. It gets pressurized and makes oil come from top to bottom. So you can get, or from bottom to top, I'm sorry, I can English today. It uh, comes from the bottom of the engine up to the top to keep oil up here. Well, this engine is royally screwed if you see by the rust down in the cylinders. I don't know if we had a head gasket blowout, but the gasket looks okay, but there is definitely some severe water contamination in the outer two cylinders for sure, which is weird because the middle two were the ones that didn't have compression. That would be two and three. Um, so that's definitely bizarre. The cylinder wall over here is cracked. There's cracking on this side. That is definitely a freaking problem. Um, so this engine is royally smoked. However, these are the pistons of an engine. So this is what blows up and goes up and down and makes stuff run. This is the head. This is the bottom of the head. So you have your, let me orient myself, your intake valve and your exhaust valve on every single cylinder and the spark plug sticking through between them. You'll notice this spark plug isn't really threaded in that far. So whoever did the spark plugs before me, I actually do know the uh, shop that did that and <laughs> I'll tell them they did a wonderful job on that. Um, but uh, yeah, so that is the parts of an engine. And once we get down to the block, that's as far as I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna take the rods out and anything like that. Um, but this is the combustion process. After it gets blown up in the piston, you see it's kind of dome shaped in here. That's like a bowl. It's like that, like a shaped charge to make it go down. When it blows up, it comes out the exhaust valve, leaves out the exhaust port through the exhaust, and it's gone. And all that timing from these push rods right here coming out the camshaft, that was it right there. So this is our camshaft inside here. You can see it down in there. Barely, it's really murky. Let me get a light and see if I can't make it a little easier for you. Oh, Jesus. Let's see if we can see down in there. Yeah, we can a little bit. So you can see the seats for the push rods and the, uh, the camshaft is what pushes those up and down. So this front one right here is down, and this one right here is up. So cylinder one and four. Four is full of, full of water. <laughs> totally toasted, which is weird. Um, 
that these two, maybe I'm remembering it wrong. Maybe it was one in four that didn't have compression, but this thing has had a very, very bad day. So anyway, that's all we've got for today on the uh, internal parts of an engine. Um, there are some other things I could show you on this engine, like how a water pump pushes water through the water jackets on here, or how the coil packs fire and whatnot, but really we'll have to do a component by component video on how everything works because that's just too in-depth so today was just engines how they work how they don't work in this case and then um, what ahead in a block are so hopefully you learned something please like and subscribe for more videos like this because uh, this is actually time I'm not getting paid for so by all means give me all those thumbs up for it for teaching you guys something and Hopefully this will help you understand engines a little better. So if you're a mechanic or you're looking to buy a car and they say it's got a head gasket, you would have to do all of this work to get down to the head portion of this engine. And it's really not worth doing. You can buy a used engine, which is what I did for this particular gentleman. I wouldn't take it apart and fix this because you take it apart to fix what could be a head gasket for water in the cylinder and find out you got a cracked block. Just replace the engine at that point. They're cheap enough at the junkyard. I think this one was $650 after getting it shipped to me. Um, online and uh, or at a junkyard that was far away and had to ship it. I don't remember where I got it. The point is, they're cheap enough. Don't do all this work. It's not worth it. And in the car, it's even harder because you can't get all the way around it like I am right now on the floor. So be safe out there. See you next time.